Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Today we're going to work on a variation of Ekapada Raja Kapotasana, which translates as the one-legged king pigeon pose. And it is known as a backbend. However, today we're going to use it as a way of stretching the gluteal muscles, the outer hip, as well as the hip flexors, the front of the hip. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you're notified when a new video is available. We'll be using a blanket and uh, we'll create a three fold. And if you feel particularly stiff in the hips, whether it is in the outer hip, the gluteal muscles, or whether it is in the hip flexors, it may be worth using a bolster or perhaps two blankets so that you've got more height underneath the hips. We'll start in simple cross legs. Let's bring the right shin in front and be quite close to the front narrow end of your mat. As we sit in simple cross legs, the right shin in front, let's move our blanket so it's only underneath the right buttock. Now, as we take this left leg to move behind us, let's bring the right heel in closer to the blanket so we've got a deep knee flexion. Sweep the left leg behind you so that you come on to the very front of the thigh. So we internally rotate this thigh Rather than resting on the inner knee and the inner foot, can you come all the way over onto the kneecap and the front foot, the toenails. Roll the outer left hip forward. Let's be on our fingertips. If it's difficult for you to reach fingertips to the floor, perhaps you can have bricks underneath your hands to give yourself some extra support. Note that this heel is in very close to the blanket. We're not trying to keep the shin parallel to the front edge of the mat. You can point your toes towards the left side of your mat. Lift up the chest and go on rolling the outer left hip forward. So that requires this feeling of internally rotating the left thigh. Now some of you may be supple enough in the hips that you don't need this blanket or you don't need as much of this folded blanket, perhaps just a two-fold is enough, maybe you can eliminate the blanket. But as we now move forward, we're going to stretch the arms forward. Keep rolling the outer left hip forward, lengthen the breastbone forward, for it can come down towards the floor. Note that if you eliminate the blanket from under the right buttock, whether the right buttock touches the floor or not. And if in an effort to touch the floor with the right buttock, does this outer left hip drag back and do you come more onto the inner knee and the big toe edge of the foot? Our intention is to stay on the front of the kneecap. Feel the little toe on that left foot press into the floor. Now walk your hands in, raise the head up, raise the torso up, keep walking the hands in closer and closer towards the alignment of the outer hips, lift your chest well, and we allow the back to arch. The full pose Ekapada Raja Kopatasana is a back bend, and this is preparation for the full pose. Now, if you can go further, walk your hands back to the outer edges of the mat, further behind the line of the hips. The shoulder tips press back and down, and still we're internally rotating the left thigh, moving the outer left hip forward. Steady your breath. Now release the grip of the mat behind you and bend this left knee. Ensure that you're still on the front of the thigh. As you bend the knee, can you reach your left hand back to catch the ankle? At this stage, my hand is on the inner ankle. 
If you can't manage to reach your hand back to hold the ankle, you can potentially use a belt around the front foot, around the ankle, and hold on to the belt. The biceps are rolling up towards the ceiling, shoulder tip is rolling back, but my chest is not square to the front of the mat as yet. So now, as I change the positioning of my hand, my hand's now on the outer ankle, I'm intending to bring this left side chest forward, level with the right side chest, to the front edge of the mat. As we lengthen the hip flexors here on this upper left thigh, grip the left buttock, press the buttock forward as you pull the left heel away from the buttock. Now, see if you can reach your right hand back. You may need to pull the heel in closer to the buttock first. Reach your right hand back. Again, you're gripping the ankle, interlock the fingers, and pull the heel away from the buttock as you squeeze the left hip forward. Outer left hip forward, chest lifted. Now let's release and straighten the left leg. Now let's come back to simple cross legs. Lean over onto the right buttock so that you can bring this right heel further forward, sweep the left leg around, bring the left shin in front for simple cross legs and we'll place the blanket under both buttocks and sit still for a moment in simple cross legs. With the left shin in front, Let's shift the blanket so that it comes only underneath the left buttock. And then we'll set the right leg off to the side, draw the left heel closer to your blanket, keep the knee within the boundary of your mat, and we'll sweep the right leg around behind us, come onto the front of the kneecap, the front of the thigh. Point the toes back so you feel the front foot the big toenail and the little toenail are on the floor. Press into the fingertips or hands on bricks to lift your chest up. But go on internally rotating this right thigh so that your outer right hip moves more and more forward towards the front end of your mat. Again, if you feel quite supple in the hips, you can eliminate the blanket. Note, if you do move the blanket, whether you are collapsing onto the inner aspect of that right knee and right foot, it can be very helpful to have that support under the left buttock so that you're intending to keep your pelvic bones level to the front end of the mat. Outer right hip forward as we stretch the arms forward, stretch the hands forward, forward towards the floor. Stay on the very front of that right kneecap, front of the right foot. So the back of the hips are level to the floor. Now raise the head up, walk the hands in, and see if you can walk the hands further and further back so they come more in line with the side hips. Go on moving the outer right hip forward as you lift your chest. So here we're allowing for a back bend to be present in our spine, but can you lift the navel up so we're still staying active in our pelvic abdominal muscles? Now see if you can walk your hands further back towards the right foot. Creep your hands further back and hold the outer edges of your mat. 
Press the shoulder tips back as you move the thoracic spine in towards the breastbone. Grip the right buttock and move the outer right hip forward. So you still want to feel the right little toe pressing down into the floor. Now we let go of the outer edges of the mat. Turn back so it's as if you're twisting to the right for a moment. Bend the right knee and reach your right hand back to hold the inside of the ankle. And again, if you can't reach, use a belt. Then to bring the chest square to the front edge of the mat, take your right hand to the outer ankle and pull the heel away from the buttock as you turn the right chest forward. So the chest is square to the front edge of the mat. We're gripping this right buttock, moving the outer right hip forward as we're pulling the heel away from the buttock. Chest well lifted. Then see if you can reach your right hand back. You may need to pull the heel in closer to you. Right hand back, interlock the fingers, and then again, press the right buttock forward pull the heel away from the right buttock. Shin bone presses to the wall behind you. Then we can release the grip, straighten the right leg, come back onto the fingertips. Lean into the left buttock to sweep the right leg back around. Adjust your blanket so that it's under both buttocks as we come back to sit in simple cross legs. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. The link is in the description box below.